Recording in progress. All right, I've started the recording. So guys, the things that we're gonna be doing today is like how we're gonna be configuring security configuration of our application. Now you might be wondering like, okay, Avilas, we already have created users and done certain things. Uh, but in this lesson, we're gonna be configuring the HTTP security and we're gonna be creating our own filter chain. And we're gonna be controlling how different endpoints that we have in our application, how we can restrict those endpoints uh, based on the user roles and how can we configure those end and basically you know we're going to be securing our endpoints which is there in our application the way we want okay right now what is happening if i'm going to start this application one second let me just start this application and deploy it on the tomcat server now the application that we are creating by default spring has protected all our you know endpoints like hi hello by something right but imagine this high end point i do not want to protect or this buy end point i do not want to protect then i will be needing some custom configuration okay right now by default all of my endpoints are protected i might not need it for an example if i'm going to the selenium express website right this main url this is not protected at all you can go and can access this website but let's say if you want to go to this course okay this course is protected you cannot go to this endpoint right you need to have access to go to there okay so you may need you you will be having different um, you know uh, different need which is your website specific and today we're going we're gonna to be learning how we can give authorization access to our application endpoints okay okay first of all just tell me right now um we have set up a spring security filter chain and how we have configured spring security filter chain anyone like where we have configured a spring security filter chain in our application like where we have done it anyone in our application in our configuration where we have done the spring security filter chain where we are creating Anyone? Enable web security. Enable web security. Okay. We have not created it by ourselves. Whenever we have written this annotation, enable web security, spring security behind the scene, creating a filter chain for us. Okay. And because of that filter chain, if you're going to see over here, we, whenever we are hitting any endpoint, like, um, you know, let's say I did hit the endpoints last by, but this endpoint is protected all this security filter chain has came into the protection and right now you can see that we haven't explored all these filters yet but we know there are a lot of filter chains are there uh, standing in front of our you know urls and protecting them okay but we have not created them this filter chain has been created by the web uh, enable web security if you go inside this okay and if you're going to go inside the configuration from where it is securing our endpoints, it's inside the web security configuration right here. Okay. And if you want to scroll down, as I have told you guys previously, it is creating a spring security filter chain for you. No need to look at the code as I have said, you guys always just concentrate over here. See this method documentation is creates a spring security filter chain and return what this method return a filter. What kind of filter? Look at that this filter represents a spring security filter chain and if you're gonna if you're gonna observe it a little bit okay right now they are doing something over here just look at this part authorize dot any request dot authenticated look at this part okay any request dot authenticated what does this means is any request which is coming to your website is now somebody has to authenticate himself in order to access them and that's why even though you have not written any spring security filter chain in your configuration spring security is kind of creating a configuration for you inside that configuration they have written some commands like like you know activate security for every request okay and that's why all our request is right now protected okay now the thing is now the thing is okay how we are protecting our urls okay 
I have this question for you. Now let's say this endpoint is protected by this endpoint is protected. Hi, this endpoint is protected. Hello. How these endpoints are protected? How we have protected them? Just a question for you. Your answer is just in front of your screen. How we have protected all our endpoints? Yes? Yeah, Digna? With a login. With a login page, right? And I have told you guys, this login page is over here because we have one filter in place, right? What is that filter? What is that filter if you're gonna see over here? Default, default login, login page login. generating login filter. Login okay. Now we have not created this filter also. We have not created this filter chain. We have not added this particular filter chain to uh, like, you know, we, we, we actually have no role defining this. Spring security has al already done that because of this annotation. Okay, cool. So right now, this request, we are hitting where? This request, let's say I'm hitting this endpoint. Where I'm hitting it? I'm hitting it in my browser, right? So whenever I'm hitting all this request in my browser, this default login page that I'm having, which has been configured through the Spring Security, whenever I'm hitting any endpoints of my application, it is protected, okay? Because I'm hitting it in my browser. Let's say I'm gonna hit this another request, let's say same request, hi. I'll go to my uh, Postman right here, okay? Imagine like that high request if you have seen before where we have it. One second. Hi, hi, hi. Hi request where we have created it. This one, hi controller. See, it's a get mapping we have created which is returning hi everyone. It's a rest controller. Um, okay, so we can also uh, hit this endpoint, get endpoint uh, through our postman, right? Let's just go over here. I have this request here called hi, okay? Uh, spring security high. Look at this endpoint. I have already copied and pasted it to your postman. Now, now tell me if I'm going to be hitting this endpoint, okay? If I'm going to be hitting this endpoint right now, will I be able to get the details? If I'm going to do send here, will I be able to get the details? No, I'm not getting the details over here. I'm not getting hi everyone. I'm not getting the response over here. So this is some HTML page it is giving. What kind of HTML page? click on preview, it is just saying unauthorized. Obviously, I'll not be able to access to this endpoint because it is not authorized. In order to authorize, the, in order to access this endpoint, I have to do authentication. But right now, how I'll be doing the authentication? Because this request I'm hitting through Postman. Whenever I am hitting it through the browser, mostly a human is hitting it so that we are giving a login page so that the human can enter the username and password. But right here, Obviously, this is a rest endpoint. Mostly a machine will, com machine will communicate. A machine will hit this particular endpoint or another application will hit that particular endpoint. And that time he will not have, like that application will not have a, a login page, right? At that time, we have to go to the authorization. We have to choose a type of authorization like what is this? So auth endpoints or JWT uh, or security we have here. We have not activated any kind of uh, thing. So we will go to HTTP basic, where is that? Bureau token, API. Third one, Abhilash. Third, Third one. one, basic auth, yeah. Over here, we have to give the username and password. Let's say my username is Akhil and password is Akhil. I think I have this user in my database. Can I confirm, sorry, not in my database. I think uh, somewhere here I have configured it, right? Akhil and this password means Akhil only if I do remember it. So if I'm gonna go to my Postman, if I'm gonna do this, do a send, I'm getting hi everyone, right? So here I have done another type of authentication. What kind of authentication I have done over here? The basic authentication. And how I'm able to do the basic, basic authentication? Because here Spring Security by default have created another type of filter for me that is called basic authentication filter. This filter is by default activated for me. That's why I can send my username and password like this using my postman. And whenever I do a send, I'm getting back the response, right? So now what you understand is a lot of things has been configured for you. Spring Security has created a login page for you. Spring Security has created a basic authentication for you so that you can 
utilize this feature whenever you are sending any endpoint, let's say you are hitting any endpoint, you have to make sure if I'm gonna do a send, okay, it is giving me unauthorized access because I have not chosen any authentication. But if I'm choosing a basic auth, I'm giving my username password like Akhil Akhil, or I think I have another user called Anil, I'm gonna do Anil Anil, then I'll be getting back my response over here. And all these things are possible because of the filters that I have over here. This is for my REST endpoint. This filter is helping me to a basic authentication. And this is helping me to do a login and lo login function um, uh, using my web browser, okay? In the chat, Avilas, your screen is lagging. Is it so, guys? It's fine. Yeah, it was lagging for a bit. I think it's fine now. Uh, okay. Digna, Rakesh, uh, Rakesh, Anil, Anju, Archana, can you confirm? Like, it's lagging for you guys also? Yeah, it's fine. Yes, okay. yes. Lagging, Archana? Lagging. It's lagging. Okay. Um, not for a second. Okay, okay. Let me any, okay, okay. Just just let me know, okay, if it is going to lag uh, one more time, okay? Sure, sure. Cool. Now, my question is, my question is to you guys, now you have seen that we have three, now I think you should be familiar with this filter right now, basic authentication filter, helping you to do the login. If you wanna do a basic authentication, mostly the rest type of request. Default login page generating filter for the login page that you are seeing on your screen. Whenever you are hitting any endpoint from your browser, the browser is prompting you like, whenever I'm hitting this endpoint, I'm hitting through this client. This client is a Google Chrome, which is a browser, right? That's why I'm getting this page. And all this thing is activated because of the enable uh, web security, whatever, whatever, okay? Now, if you're gonna go over here, I wanna see how it is activating it. If you wanna go to this web security configuration, okay? If I'm gonna see their basic uh, filter chain they're creating for us, this is the Spring Security Filter Chain. This is the bean name, if you remember. Default filter, filter chain, Spring Security Filter Chain is the default bean Spring is creating. And that's why in your console, you are seeing that security filter chain over here. And these are the different filters which is activated. Um, inside this, okay, let me just go down. Now I have made many requests. And right over here, I'm seeing this couple of guys. Why these are here? Let's just see how they have configured the filter chain. If I'll go back. Okay, okay, right here inside this method. Okay, what they have done, see. They have created, one second, right here. They have created an object called HTTP security. This is an object they have created, okay. What this object is going to do, this is going to help us to intercept your secure, like, you know, to configure your security in your application. Like on, uh, any type of in incoming HTTP request are coming, you can customize those requests using this, um, this particular class. Okay, if you're gonna come down to the filter chain bean, see, here they have done two, three things. All your HTTP security requests, now look at this much thing, Every request which is coming is right now, any request which is coming is right now authenticated. Now they have authenticated, they have done HTTP security dot form login. Just see this much apart. They have done a form login. That's why they have called this method. That's why I'm getting this page. And also they have used this HTTP basic. They have written this method. That's why whenever I'm gonna go over here, and if I'm gonna do a send by sending this username and password, it is doing, I'm just doing a basic authentication thing over here. And that has been taken care by that filter that I have shown you, this filter, uh, which filter, uh, basic authentication filter. And this filter is getting activated because they have written this line of code called HTTP basic, okay? You don't trust me, let's just see what is going to happen right now. Let me close all this thing. Now what I'm gonna do, I will create my own filter chain. Instead of, I will use the Spring Security Filter Chain that they have created for me inside this annotation, inside this method, all these stops they are doing, they are authenticating all the requests, they are activating a form login, they are activating the HTTP basic, and they are doing all this thing through this object called HTTP security. Same way, I will be doing it in my class, right? Let's just see if I can do it. So I'll be going to my security app config right here, okay? And here I'll be creating another method, okay? Look at this, guys. Here people are getting stuck in our uh, batch. 
who are following the previous or the old lessons because a lot of things has been changed. We're going to be talking about that right now. Let's say I'm going to be having uh, a method and here I'm going to be setting up uh, sec HTTP security. Okay, HTTP security. I'll be intercepting my HTTP request and configuring it in my way. Okay, so what I'm trying to setting off, I'm setting off a filter chain, okay, or security filter chain. I want to uh, set off this thing, okay, and obviously I want, I do not want to call this method by myself. I, I want Spring to call this method and create a bean for me for Spring security filter chain so that my bean, my Spring security filter chain will be used, okay. So I'm going to write a bean over here. So I want Spring to call this method and uh, whatever the security I'll be configuring over here, I want Spring to apply those things over the default configuration, okay? So right over here, how can I configure it? So I need to return a Spring security filter chain. This is an interface, okay? So what is the implementation? Control T, the implementation is default security filter chain. So if I want to do this, what I can, what I can do right over here, if I want to create a security filter chain, I have to return a default, a new default, security filter chain over here but this is this is not a good way to create a default security filter chain rather i will be using the same approach which has been used by spring internally i will be creating a builder class object called http security http security and i will be auto wedding it this object will be created by spring and i will be just getting the object from spring and auto wearing it and i will be taking this guy right here and I will be doing HTTP security dot build. And if I'm going to do build, you can see it is going to return you a default security filter chain. So instead of, you know, instead of doing return new default security filter chain, I'm calling the build method and the build method is going to return me a implementation of security filter chain object. So I don't have to give a damn like how they're creating it behind the scene inside the build method. They have written the logic. I don't want to return. Uh, I, do, I don't want to write all this logic by myself. I know this is going to return a security filter chain object for me. Okay. Now this is going to throw some exception. Throw it to your method. Okay. That's it. We are done. Okay. Now do a control. So we have overridden the spring security filter chain configuration which has been defined over here, okay? Now, if you wanna see our um, thing, see, this has been reloaded. Now, if I'll go to Google Chrome, if I'm gonna try to access any of my endpoint, hi, see, there is no protection by, see, there is no protection, hello, there is no protection because we have not configured any security filter chain. And look at our security filter chain right now, okay? It looks much smaller than the one that we used to have previously. And where is our default login page generator? We don't have it right now. Where is that HTTP, even if you want to do over here right now, if you don't want to specify any authentication, if you want to hit this endpoint, see, I'm able to, I'm able to hit them, right? So I do not have any security provided. And for this, previously, there used to be a filter called HTTP, uh, what is that? Basic authentication filter. That filter is also not available inside this filter chain right now. You are not able to see them, right? Previously, we used to have it. I don't know if I have that I have that in the previous log. See, pre for our previous request, whenever we used to hit our previous request like buy, we used to have this endpoint which is protecting our request. Basic authentication filter for REST requests. Default login page generating filter. If I'm hitting the same request from a web browser, but right now, you can, you can see those filters in my filter chain right now, okay? So I have to activate them, okay? So how can I activate? I can activate them by using that HTTP security and I can just do activate it by writing HTTP basic that will create the basic authentication filter for you, okay? And also you can write HTTP security dot form login which will activate the login form for you, right? So if I'm gonna do control S, let's just see what is going to happen right now. Am I getting that in my filter list? So if I'll go to my, um, so my core has been reloaded. I think it's reloading, okay? Right now, if I'll go to the Google Chrome, let's just hit this, hello. Obviously this endpoint is not protected because I have not told my security filter chain to protect this endpoint, but you know, I'll be able to hit them. But let's just check the filter chain, okay? So this filter chain we are getting right now, see basic authentication filter is back in action and default login page generating filter is back in action. So using this couple of uh, method call, we are able to activate 
our login form that will be used through the web browser and the basic authentication filter which will be used through the uh, which will be used for the rest based requests right so i'll be coming them out for now for a moment okay and right now let's just let's just remove this you understand i think uh, this point and now let's just protect our endpoint yeah yeah question yes bagyo if you want to secure only one endpoint yes how, how do we do it? exactly we're going to see right now none of our endpoints are protected right bagyo none yes. of our endpoints is protected now let's because just protect I'm, we are overriding here yeah because okay. we are overriding here let's just try to do the same thing that you have told me right now In first case, you if you are not overriding uh, uh -huh. if we if we comment at enable uh, uh, please go up uh huh if i'll comment this yes what will happen obviously this will not enable the spring security filter chain for you right now right so i okay. so anyhow whenever even if it is there whenever you're going to create this bin your bin will have the priority okay you are overriding if, that if particular we if we didn't create this one then if, if we you didn't create this if one you, if you uh, if you're not going to uh, create this one then the bin which has been defined inside this web security that will be taken the priority we have already seen if that we, if we comment out What if we comment out that bin now if we don't define if we don't define the you know security bin over here and if you don't define the security bin over here then your spring security not will not bootstrap bagyo as we have seen previously because when your spring security will bootstrap it will by default look for a bin called spring security filter chain and that bin is being created by this um this um you know uh annotation behind the scene that's creating that particular bin for me that's why i have activated activated this one right okay. now it will do all the necessary configuration by importing the configuration from all these classes right it is doing a whole lot of configuration for you and i do not want to do that from my end it is also doing a configuration for me uh, by creating a filter chain bin uh, right over here but here they have by default done some basic thing that's why we are enjoying that feature from the last three class by default it is protecting all my request authorized request any request authenticated this line making sure that all my requests are protected and they were activating a form login and a basic authentication filter for us for the rest based request and the web based request but right now i want to keep all the default they have set for me but this bin i want to override okay bagya that's what i'm trying to do the rest of the rest of the settings i want to keep so that's why this annotation i will keep over here only i'll be overriding this filter chain bin okay right now if i'll be overriding this filter chain bin right now i have overridden the default so no url will be protected for me right now okay this much is making sense bagya bagya yes bagya right now obviously none of the url will be protected this will not be protected this will not be protected this will not be protected right now let's protect them if i want to protect them let's just use their formula okay the way they have done it i am going to use the same thing i'm going to do http security the object that i have defined over here in the top and then i'm going to call a method called authorize http request guys notice over here there are few overloaded methods i'm going to be coming back to this okay and one thing you remember right now knowingly i have used a version and this version is the spring security sixth version we are using for all our spring security jars like for web mbc for security all the security jars that we have we have used the spring security sixth version this version is uh, basically the sixth version right right over here sixth version so that there, there are few things has been changed as well in 6.1 version of spring security remember that the 6.0 version is used by spring boot 3 okay so all this configuration will be work for spring boot 3 but that is the difference between the spring boot 3 and spring boot 3.1 spring security 6.0 and spring security 6.1 right now all this configuration we are doing with spring security 6.0 and then i will upgrade okay so right now you can use all these methods to configure or customize your http request now i am going to use this request st authorize http request previously if you have taken my older course you might be using this request authorize request but this is been um, deprecated right now do not use this one so right now use this method 
which one authorize um, authorized HTTP request in 6.1 version of Spring, uh, Spring Security. This is also deprecated, but we will be talking about it a little bit. But right now, I'm going to do HTTP security authorize HTTP request dot. Okay, any request. Okay, dot authenticated. Okay, like this. All right. So now, what I mean by this, I want to protect any request which is coming to my website. And I want all of them to be authenticated. I'm configuring it using this authorized HTTP request. Same thing that I have done here. What Spring Security people has done for me inside this class. Okay. Same thing I have done. I have done any request authenticated. Look at my code. I have done the same thing. I have, I have done any request authenticated. Let's just see right now what is going to happen. Let's just do control S. Uh, let's just restart my server. And let's just see whether all of our endpoints are protected right now. Okay. So, um, yes. Flash, yes. I'm a little confused, honestly, because uh -huh. I think I have not attended the last class. I'm not, it doesn't make sense. The, why are we overriding the spring security bin? And also, what is that uh, in memory? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Archana, we have discussed all those things in the last session. Um, yeah, okay. maybe <laughs> it's not comfortable. That's what Archana. I told everyone that you have to be very consistent with the spring security thing. If you missed one session main, there will be a problem. I am, I completely understand that, uh, like for that daylight saving thing and, uh, you are from a different time zone and maybe, uh, your day job is overlapping with this, or maybe it is too late for you in the evening. Um, maybe you can just, um, you know, cover those three sessions, Arjuna, if you can in the weekend, right? Um, just focus on the things that we are discussing right now. Uh, don't stress pretty much like the things that we have done previously. Uh, but yeah, uh, take time in the weekend to go through all the other lessons that um, like, I think two lessons only we have covered on spring security. Okay. Take time in the next four days and practice them and think things will make sense and just discuss with me in our call that we're going to be having if you have any questions on this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is making sense to the other people, right? Can you just make uh, like people who have joined earlier? Anil, uh, Anju, can you just confirm me? Okay, Digna. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, yes right? Okay. Yes. Archana, it is very simple, right? Uh, like someone with, with your caliber will catch it within, uh, you know, very shortly. So just go through those lessons. You just miss them and that is the problem. Okay. So uh, just, just, okay. just, yeah, just watch them for a couple of, uh, like in a couple of lessons, I think it should be okay. Okay. Now oh, look okay. at that. Yeah. Now look at that. What is happening? All of our endpoints are protected, right? But look at that. All of our endpoints are protected. We are not getting the data here. Hi, bye, hello. This is not returning me any data, but it is saying access denied. It is not prompting me the login page. It's protected those URL. See, I'm not getting the data back, right? Whenever I'm saying hi, hello, bye. By default, right now, all of my requests need an authentication. Right. And that's why it has protected all my resources, but I'm not getting the, the login page, right? It, has, it is saying server understood the request, but refuses to authorize it. I understand that you are trying to access this particular endpoint, but I could not authorize you. Obviously it, it cannot authorize me because obviously I'm hitting an endpoint, which is protected and I'm directly hitting it. I'm bypassing the login. That's why it is saying, okay, you bypass the login. I understand that what you are trying to hit, but I cannot authorize your request and I cannot give you the response for this particular endpoint. And that's why we're just getting the 403 forbidden. And what is the problem that is happening? We are able to protect our endpoints, but what is the problem? What is the thing which is missing over here? Anyone? Login. Login page, right? If you're going to see right now, our login page is not there. Our, that, uh, you know, uh, default login page generator filter is not there. I have to activate that. And how can I activate? I, uh, I have already told you that. How can I activate it? Dot form login, right? Now let's just see. Uh, Abhilash, yes. If you write form login, uh, the authentication uh, will come automatically, right? Exactly, exactly. But let's no just see. No need to write. Uh, the code you write now authentication. All the authentication not no, 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 no. One second. This one will protect your endpoint. This one will generate the login page. If you're going to only write this, 
it will give you the login page only right but that login page will only be used once you have some request which need the authentication which needs the authentication for an example right now hi i'm directly able to access them because this doesn't need a authentication uh, details maybe if i'm right login i'll be getting this page because this page has been exposed by spring security but this page will only be populated once you're going to be trying to access any secured resources right now this hi hello bye these are not secured right digna Uh, okay now let me activate them now i have secured all my endpoints and i'm activating the form login let's just see what is going to happen right now let it reload the changes and um i'm gonna um okay let it reload the changes once uh okay so uh, i will go to my web page now i'm gonna be hitting hello no you cannot log in uh, you cannot access hi you cannot access by you cannot access you have to give the credential right now let's say i'm hitting hi i have to give the credential let's say um a kill in a kill here do a sign in now i'll be able to log in now he can use by now he can use hello now he can use uh, use any of the endpoints right so we have activated this particular thing but what about if we can access something from uh, from rest let's say if i'm going to do a send I have not selected anything over here. Let's just see what is going to happen. Okay, see, it is not helping me. Uh, so right now it is just throwing me a login page, which is useless because when I'm hitting it from a like if I'm hitting it using my Postman, my Postman internally is making a call. I told you guys right in our rest sessions, a high end point we made a call, and this is a HTTP request. Okay, this is a HTTP request. This is some different type of request. This is not. Uh, it's not like you know we are hitting from a web browser. We are hitting it from a, a REST client. So you can copy this and you can hit it from a terminal also. In the terminal, you will, it it is impossible. Like you know, you'll be filling in the details for the username and password because the request will mostly go like this. You have to. This is your request. You can copy and paste it in your um, terminal window and make a hit. So at that time, so th that kind of thing will not make sense, right? Where is that? this kind of thing is not make sense this is what we don't need right so I, i i do not want to provide my username and password in a login screen like this right so this is what it is going to give you in a response the login page the default login page spring security is creating now to activate that filter that we are looking for what is that http basic uh, authentication filter which will be responsible for my rest uh, kind of thing here also if you're going to go over here and if you're going to look for the basic authentication and if you're going to give the details anil anil in the username and password still see you are not going to get those things you are still going to get this login page this is what it is giving you in return but right now let act, let's activate that filter as well http security dot basic base http basic or something uh http basic now this is going to activate that filter uh, so let's just reload the code i think this is there and uh let me just try to let me just try with the basic auth with the no auth i do not want to provide any authentication now look at that this is not giving me the login page now the basic authentication filter is there okay and protecting me there you go protecting my resources when it is being hit by a client like postman right and now if i'll be giving the basic auth and if i'm giving the username password do a send and there you go okay so your filters are in action right now and you have uh, you have created your own security filter chain over here okay so um, okay so far is it making a little bit of sense guys little bit yes it's i got something to understand it's not like it's to do so far as so it's not like to just i cannot hear you properly felix um can you can you come again please what happened in this approach csrf csrf okay i haven't went to the csrf stuff yet uh, felix uh, csrf stops come whenever you are hitting a post request all my request are right now uh, get request right so the cross site thing uh, that thing we will cover right uh just let me introduce all these things then we can go into that i know that you have completed them previously so that you have curiosity but even you know felix um even these things will not work in the latest version uh, and to everyone 
and all these things are possible right now. You have created the Spring Security Filter chain and everything looks good. You can, you can like, you know, use this in your application as well, but this is not right now, uh, like, you know, most of the things has been deprecated in the 6.1 version of the Spring Security. Now, now for, okay, before we go for that, is this things making sense? Whatever we have written here is making sense or is not making sense, guys? Can you confirm me once? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. All, yes. Everything is making sense, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Be okay. Okay. Before I tell you about the versioning thing, how much time I have? 8.20. Okay. Um, all right. That's good. Maybe we can continue from here. So we can have a short lesson. Um, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, one, uh, one question. Like, yes. Suppose we are creating custom login page for our application. Yes. And in that case, we want to authenticate. So uh -huh. how we can do that instead of form login, we need to do something else. No, here only form login and you're going to be giving your login page and you can uh, customize your things like this. Your login page uh, request will go like this. Let's say my custom login and you will be creating a login page for this URL, which will be returning that. Okay. Oh, okay. But these are the things which has been changed, uh, uh, Sunil. Mm. Uh, so same thing, same thing is there, but I'm thinking like how to introduce it. Okay. okay. So right now I hope that we understand how all these things basically working, but now we have some specific requirements. I want you to see and analyze this requirement before you move to the next part, okay? For an example, right now, all the requests which is coming to our server is right now authenticated, right? But I do not want to authenticate all the requests. Rather, any request which is coming to my server right now should be permitted. Imagine my client has a crazy requirement like this. He doesn't want to authenticate all the incoming requests. Rather, he wants to permit them. In that case, you can just write permit all. And this will make sure that any request which is coming to your server is right now permitted and it doesn't need any authentication. And that's why we have removed dot authentication method. Okay, this method we removed and we uh, replace it with the permit all method like this. Okay, now this will do what? If I'm gonna restart my server, this is going to do what? If I'll go to my Google Chrome and if I'll go to any of the endpoint like by, you can see it is permitted. Hi, it also doesn't need any authentication. Let's say hello, this also doesn't need any authentication, right? So right now all the requests are permitted because I have used this method called permit all. Now, what about if I want to use uh, some method like uh, deny all, the method says everything, right? Now, every request coming to your server is right now going to be denied because I have used the deny all method. Now you can see, now if, if you wanna hit like, you know, hi, uh, see, it's giving you the login page, it is securing it, but right now if I'm gonna giving the username and password, see, it is just giving me forbidden, okay? Not only hi, I think I won't be able to access any endpoint like hello, I'm already authenticated, so it is not prompting me the screen, but hello is also right now denied by the server. And let's say if I'm gonna write by, by is also getting denied by the server as well, okay? So these are the three important methods like uh, deny all, permit all, and authenticated. You need to understand the differences between them, okay? Deny all is denying, denying all the requests, permit all is permitting all the requests, and authenticated is making sure that that, uh, like, you know, any request which is coming to a server is authenticated. Okay, right now, let's say I have a requirement and the requirement is like this. Okay, let me just remove this part. Let's say the requirement is, let's say high request should be uh, authenticated. Okay, by request should be denied by all. Okay, it should be denied whenever you are going to access it. Doesn't matter if you are the admin or you are the user or you are who you are, like if you're trying to authenticate and you are hitting by request, then you should be getting the denied denied response, right? It should not serve you the by request. My server should not serve you the by request. And hello endpoint by like this, it is denied. And hello endpoint, let's say 
it is permitted by all okay permitted by all okay let's just check that how can we achieve it so how can we set up everything we can set up everything by configuring the http security object copy that and let's just go to our filter chain and right here i'm going to i'm going to say http security dot authorize http request authorize http request this one with the empty parameter i'm using later i'm going to be changing it to this one make sure that this one is deprecated in newer version of spring security i'm just giving you some example and making you to do some practice with this but you know i, I will be just changing it in sometime in next 10 minutes or 15 minutes i'll be changing my spring security version as well and i'm, I'm going to be upgrading to all the latest version right now i'm using the spring security 6.0 version for my project okay coming back to the requirement authorize http request dot i want to i want to intercept my http request and i want to uh, check the request which is coming to my server i want to match that request if it is matching with the request matcher i'm going to be matching and if that request which is going to be coming to my server if that is high then i'm going to be making it authenticated okay so now i'm matching the incoming request class high uh, by using the request matcher um, you know uh, method over here okay so the next one let's say http security dot authorize request okay now the request i will be matching which will be incoming to my server if it is class by if it is class by then i'll make sure this is permitted right this is permitted for everyone and like that the hello requirement that i have i'm going to be saying http security dot authorize request dot uh, request matcher and i'm going to be matching if the request is incoming if it is hello then make sure nobody is going to have an access to that okay deny all right now i have all these things ready let's just test this out if it is working fine so let me restart my server okay now let's just check the console i think there is some exception yes there is some exception my server is not able to start right now I think all my requirements, uh, all of my code that I have written is fine. It's just like, you know, hi should be authenticated, bye should be permitted, hello should be denied, right? But why I am getting this exception? The exception says uh, no bean definition exception, no bean definition exception. That means uh, it is looking for a bean and that bean is not present. A bean named MBC handler mapping interceptor uh, for uh, like you know this bean I think it is looking inside um, the spring security please ensure spring security and spring MBC are configured in a shared application context so it is giving us some crazy exception but what I understood from here is that a bean MBC handler mapping interceptor it is not available I think spring security is looking for it uh, behind the scene well this bean you don't have to create if you're using spring boot but just for now just to make my application work i'll be creating this bean so this bean uh, right now my spring security application is looking for so right now I, if i'll simply create this bean i think i'll make my code work so don't try to understand you know what this particular thing doing let's just simply create that bean okay so i'm gonna be creating a bean of handler mapping interceptor uh, let's say handler mapping interceptor and let me just create the object for this new handler mapping interceptor and i'll be creating the bean for this as well i'm going to be writing at bean and here i'll be defining the name of the bean and the name of the bean which my framework is looking for behind the scene is this one so i'll paste it over here okay so just create a bean like this i think things will be fixed let me just save this and let's just try to run the same example now my dispatcher is trying to restart again and my server has been uh, you know started uh, successfully now let me just uh, you know try this endpoints right so i can just go over here okay and i can just look for high endpoint this is authenticated i have to log in uh, in order to access the high endpoint let's say hello now hello is let me see hello uh, 
hello is denied by all okay so i should not i should not be able to access the hello endpoint but whenever i'm trying to access it is still prompting me this space but i think if i'm going to be giving uh, the details over here uh, this is denied right so anyhow it is working good let me just do log out and let me just go out of it and now let's say i'll be trying the buy endpoint for buy i have not specified any security i think it should be accessed for uh, for everyone even without uh, giving any authentication for this okay and uh, let's just check hi one more time it is prompting me uh, the login page and i'm going to be uh, logging in with some user and i am logged in so hi needs an authentication and once we successfully authenticated the server is serving me this particular endpoint and giving me a response back i hope this thing is making sense to you guys a little bit all right so right now let's say we have a requirement if we have hi okay and let's say my client says okay hi and hello both need to be authenticated right now don't try to deny it so let me remove this guy right now and let's say i want hi is need an authentication and hello is also needing an authentication so maybe i can do the same thing one second let me let me just do this i can do the same thing hello and instead of deny all i can just give authenticated over here and now my hello also will be authenticated something like this i can write right let's just do control s if i'll come over here if i'll be writing hi okay uh let's say i'm gonna write a kill and a kill i'm able to log in which is good now let's just try the let's just try to do a logout let me just try to hit buy endpoint slash buy as well okay uh, buy is like you know permitted by all let me just try hello endpoint hello endpoint right now i made it authenticated okay now let's just come over here and look for a kill a kill previously even after a successful authentication it was denying my request right now i have written authenticated method there now i can see hello everyone is coming over here so now hello and hi both are authenticated right so instead of making them two line uh, you can see the request matcher method if you're going to come over here it is taking one method has uh, multiple argument it is taking multiple string parameter it is taking so instead of creating a new uh, statement for this i can simply write hello over here okay right now let me just restart my server and let me see whether this line of code is working or not okay let's just check this out so right now um, you know hello is authenticated hi is authenticated by is permitted to all i hope now this couple of sentence is making sense right now and this request matcher we are using to match the incoming request pattern and if the pattern matches we are defining our method in order to give them access or in order to deny them or in order to make them authenticated i hope this thing is making sense a little bit all right guys uh one last thing here so you can see i have defined this particular bean right um because without this we used to have some crazy exception and our server was um, not bootstrapping in case you do not want to write this particular bean you can also do something else i just want to tell you about this so without writing this bean you can also fix it in this way i feel here uh, instead of uh, taking the request matcher so right now inside this request matcher we are using this method i think there is a, another request matcher overloaded method not this one i'm looking for i'm looking for another one look uh, let's just see like request matcher this is also request matcher yeah this one look this is taking a bunch of request matcher over here okay so i think if you're going to go to this request matcher there's there is a implementation uh, there called ant path request matcher i can use this class directly um i'm not telling you to do it just showing you there is another way around to fix that issue if you don't want to write this particular bin uh, you can do something like um, i think uh, and path request matcher uh, this method is taking a number of request matcher and this is one of the request matcher implementation that we have and here we have a method called ant matcher okay and use this ant matcher method and just wrap this up like this all right uh, and do the same thing for the other request as well i'm going to copy this out and for this request also do a control v and wrap this up 
like this, okay? Ant matcher, just put it inside this ant matcher method and make it authenticated. I think this should work, okay? And I think um, even you can just simplify it a little bit. Uh, so right now, instead of writing ant path matcher dot ant matcher, you can also do one thing. This ant matcher is a static method. So you can directly do a static import. If you wanna go to the top, um, right now this is the this is the class from where I'm using the method. You can have a static import. Just do a dot star like this, okay? Scroll down uh, to wherever you are defining this. Now you remove this ant path matcher from here. Directly use the ant matcher method like this. And from here also, you can remove the ant path matcher like this and directly use the ant ant matcher and parse your URL like this. And this should not bug you and this should not give you this exception, what I feel, okay? So you know, now you can come over here, you can do the same thing for the buy URL as well. I'll just wrap this off with the ant matcher and um, just uh, pass your uh, string URL inside this, okay? I think this should also fix the issue. Uh, nothing else, I have just used this method and parse my URL uh, within this. So let's just see like, you know, if uh, the things are working fine. And I think my server is started uh, without a problem right now. So I can go back and I can just test the same thing. Buy is never protected, hello is protected, and hi is protected, and everything is working good. It's prompting me a login screen, okay? Which is good, but I will stick to my previous approach. So I'll remove this and I will just remove the ant matcher from here because this will make my code look a little cleaner. Cool, I hope everything is making sense to you guys right now. But now let's just discuss the real problem here. So if you can see the version that I'm using for Spring Security is 6.0.0. All my Spring jars that you can see over here all are 6.0.0 jars. Even my Spring Security Config, Spring Security Core, Spring Security Crypto, Wave, um, I think uh, all these jars are 6.0. And also my Spring Framework jar for the Wave MBC framework is also Spring uh, 6.0. And right now this is happening because I have mentioned my Spring version as 6.0 only. This is the uh, new version, this is the latest version of Spring and right now Spring Release 6 is going on. So now all the Spring version that I have provided for Wave MBC, you can see this version attains to this one and my uh, security versions like Security Wave here only I have defined the version. If I'm gonna click on this, this is where I have defined the version. So the version is inherited and this this means it is 6.0 that I have defined globally, okay? So right now, uh, knowingly I have done that whenever I have started this course because I wanted to show you the differences. Now maybe if your project just migrated to 6.0, you might not see any issue if you have code like this. But if you are using the latest version of Spring, then you're gonna be having a problem, okay? I'm gonna tell you how. Let's just go to the Maven repository right now, okay? And right here, if you're gonna look for the Spring MVC version, let's look for the Spring Wave MVC, the latest version that we have. If, we go, if I'm gonna go over here and go to the latest version of Spring Wave MVC, Look at the version right now, it is 6.0.13. This is the latest build. Maybe we have used this version, if we have used this one, right here. Okay, it's an older version released in 2022. Today it is 17th November and 2023. So this is the latest release as of now we have, is 6.0.13. So if I'm gonna go to my pom.xml, let me just close all these internal classes. So now here my Spring a version, where is that? Right here, it is 6.0.0. Let me change it to the latest version right now, which is 6.0.13, okay? So I will copy, I'll, I'll go inside this, copy this version only, this one, Control C, and go back to your application and change this version to 6.0.13, okay? So this is the Spring version. Let me uh, just uh, save this. For Spring Security, if I'm gonna look for, now my Spring Security way, my Spring Security config is also pointing to the Spring version that I have defined on the top. Uh, the Spring version that I have defined here, right here. But if I'm gonna go to Google Chrome 
and look for the spring security latest person. Let's see what is their person number and whether the latest spring security jars that we have, is it also from the 6.0.13 version? Let's just check that. Okay, so spring security, let's just check for all the security jars that we have like core, wave, config, okay? Let's just go to the core one, okay? Look at the version number, it's 6.1.5. And what is the version we have used over here? For spring version, this 6.0.3. So for my web MBC, I'm using the latest version. Where is my web MBC? For, for this, I'm using the latest version. But from my spring security is already complaining. You can see that my let me let me let me just stop all this thing uh, because my server is going to complain right now. Okay. So now for my spring security, all my spring security jars that we have or dependency that we have is started complaining, right? Uh, because there is a version issue. And um, this, this version, I can happily use it for my Spring Web MBC because that's the latest version. But for my Spring Security, I have the latest version as 6.1.5 and maybe uh, this, this is complaining because this version uh, that we have used, 6.0.13, is never available for Spring Security jars. Okay, so my latest Spring Core version is 6.1.5. Let's just check for the Spring Security Wave. Uh, what is the latest version number or build number? 6.1.5. For Spring Security Config, it is also 6.1.5. So maybe I can create another, um, you know, specific, uh, you know, version over here for like, you know, I, I'll make a dynamic over here, spring.security.version, I'm, I'm gonna write here. And this one, I'll be making sure that this is pointing to six point, what is that version number for, what is the latest Spring Security version number? It is 6.1.5, okay? Let's just update to the latest version, 6.1.5, okay? So I have my spring version and this is my new spring security version. Copy this and for all the spring security wave, let's just change this to and change it to spring.security.version. This one also, let's just change it to spring.security.version. And this one also, let's change it to spring.security.version, okay? Like this. So my core, my config and my wave all are pointing to this version right now, which is 6.1.5, which is my spring security version. And this spring version, I'm only using it for my spring web uh, uh, MVC, because that is the latest one for the web MVC jar. So what we got to understand from here is that our web MVC version for spring is not in sync with the spring security version. Spring security is currently having the build number, is 6.1.5 and the spring, uh, the normal spring is running in 6.0.13, okay? And uh, if I'm gonna do control S, I should get rid of all this error right now, see it is gone. And also you can cross check that if you're gonna go to the spring security web jar, this is the internal project jar of spring security web. If you're gonna go over here, see, it is already using all those versions, 6.0.13 for spring bean, spring context for the container, they are using 6.0.13. So I can ensure that right now, if I'll go back, if I'll go back, I will ensure that right now, um, all the version that I have added, right? This version that I have added, 6.0.13, is compatible with this Spring Security version because the Spring Security uh, config jar or core jar, if you're gonna go inside this, internally the Spring projects they're using, they're using the latest version of Spring, uh, the Spring Framework version, which is 6.0.13. So just make sure that the build, uh, build numbers are not in sync when it compares to the normal Spring uh, version jar, like WebMBC, Spring Context, Spring Bean, and the Spring Security Framework. It is, it is having a separate build number, which is not matching with this. That's why I've created a couple of uh, dependency over here, okay? Now everything is looking good. Now we have upgraded to the latest version of Spring. So now let's just do a Control S. And right now, uh, let me just grab all the latest and I'll go to this file and boom, just see, Right now we have the issue for each line of code that we have written because Spring Security 6.1 version is not recommending us to use this kind of method, authorize HTTP request, form login, HTTP basic. Rather, Spring Security 6.1 is recommending us to write all this code, the deprecated method that we have it is, it should be in Lambda DSL style, okay? I will tell you what you mean by Lambda DSL style. It's, um, it's basically right now, uh, they are encouraging us, instead of writing like this, I will, I will, I'll explain you everything, don't worry about it. 
it should be something like this. Let's say HTTP security dot authorize HTTP request. Don't use this one that we have used over here. Use this one, okay? And this one takes a lambda over here. Along the way, I, I'm gonna be explaining you like, you know, every detail about it. But remember that they're encouraging us to write this method. And here they're asking us to take some customizer over here like this. And they're asking us to write our call like this, okay? They do not want to write our call uh, like this. Rather, they want us to write a call like this. And here they want us to do like, you know, all this thing. Now you can just take this customizer over here, do a dot, and you can just put the same thing over here like this, control C, paste it over here, okay? And you can do something like this, customizer, okay, dot, and just use the request matcher, permit all, control C, control V, something like this. So instead of this code, they want us to write code like uh, this, using this method, the method which takes a customizer interface uh, as a parameter, not the method which takes nothing inside it. So right now, from now on, we're gonna be coding with this method, okay, which takes some Lambda style of coding we're gonna be doing over here. I'm gonna be explaining you each line of code right now. Now, I think I have upgraded everything. Let's just go to our configuration now. Look at that. And you, you're, now you understand in your group why people are freaking out who are following my previous Spring Security course because they're getting deprecated messages like this. Okay? And a lot of things has been changed. Now, Spring Security is saying you can keep on using this kind of thing for the next um, couple of years till the Spring 7 version. Spring Security 7 version uh, will come. Till then, you can use them but this will be deprecated. If you're gonna go to this method, you can see for removal true. That means it will be removed whenever Spring Security 7 version will come. So if you have code like this in your office application, you used to configure things like this, this is time to upgrade. Now, how can we upgrade right now? How can we change all this thing? See, now uh, Spring Security is focusing on Lambda DSL style writing. Okay, so that it will be good for reading purpose and some chaining thing we can avoid. I'll be telling you what I mean by that. Why security people are forcing us to upgrade to some new methods. They are saying instead of using this HTTP request method, this one, you can use the overloaded version of it like this. HTTP security dot authorize HTTP request. If you want to authorize all the requests, just to authorize HTTP request, but use this one. This one, Text, uh, see, previously we used to use this one, the previous one, this one, okay? This one, look, only look at the method name, guys. Don't get made by looking into the return type right now. See, this doesn't allow anything in the parameter, right? But this one, the new method they are, they are recommending right now, this one, this allows a, uh, this has one parameter. There is a long thing, maybe you will, you're gonna be get mad if you are, not good in generics, don't worry about it, not at all worry about it. Just understand it is taking one thing in the parameter and this is a, this is taking a customizer in the parameter, okay? What is this customizer? This customizer is a functional interface which has two methods. There is a method called customize if you want to customize anything, okay? And there is a with defaults method if you want to set all the default thing, okay? So for an example, if you're gonna use this customizer interface right now, to customize any of your request, what they are saying inside the HTTP request, you, instead of giving the parameter like this, you have to give a customizer parameter. So you have to, customizer is an interface, right? You have to create a object for that, like this, customizer, like this. But customizer is a, like, you know, what kind of interface? This is a uh, functional interface, right? This method has only one abstract method. You have to override this and give it a implementation. I will just tell you the same thing. No need to look at the class name and what it is having right here. We just need to understand inside this interface, there is one method over here called customize. Only look at the parameter. It is taking one parameter. I will call this as let's say customizer. Okay, just focus on this. Customizer interface 
is the interface. We have to create a uh, implementation for that. So right here, I'm just um, overriding the method that I have inside the customizer. That's called customize. It's a void method and it takes one argument called customizer. Now using this argument, you can write like this, okay? I have this argument, customizer. Just guys, uh, just focus on the next five minutes. I will be removing all this thing. This is just for your understanding. Just look at this line of code, customizer dot any request dot authenticated do things like this now you might say okay well that's how it is helping this is looks so ugly but yeah let's just do one thing this customizer is a functional interface right so we can write lambda style syntax over here so we can remove the method signature that we have over here okay the method name the method return type everything we can re remove the class name everything we can remove just like this delete it right this is the parameter name just give a lambda symbol over here and and now we can simply remove this guy so instead of this you can customize like this right you can customize other request also like bhagya was asking okay Abilas, i want to customize another request let's say i want to customize the high request i can customize like this customizer dot let's say i want to intercept a request called hi dot request matcher like this and I can give my request like this slash high and for this I want to permit all the requests so I can just do permit all okay so right now using the customizer interface I am customizing my HTTP request I'm saying that okay for high request allow the access for everyone there is no need for any authentication but for any other request make it authenticated All right, guys, so right now as we have upgraded our projects to 6.1.x version, as you can see, the form login and HTTP basics are also giving us striked mark over here. What it does mean that this method has been deprecated from Spring 6.1 version and marked for removal. That means in near version, that means in Spring 7 version, or Spring Security 7.0.0 version, this methods will be removed. So if you're gonna be keep on writing code like this, then when your project will be upgraded to the latest version of Spring, then you'll have compilation problem. So make sure to be safer, even if you are coding in 6.0 version or 6.1 version, you write your code like this. Whenever you're activating the form login, and HTTP basics, just pass in a customizer dot with defaults. What this will do, this will configure your form login and HTTP basics with Spring Security defaults, okay? And the meaning why they are giving us this methods, these are the overloaded method that we have over here. So we also have a form login method without a parameter. And also we have a form login method which takes a customizer interface if we want to customize our form login. For an example, here I do not want to customize anything. I just want all the defaults given by Spring Security. Like I want to use the default login page, what is getting populated whenever I'm trying to sign in and I want to use all the defaults that's why I'm using this with defaults method which is a static method present inside the customizer interface which instruct the framework is that this guy want to use all the default thing that the framework is exposing but let's say if I have a custom requirement like I want to customize the form login with my custom login page that I want to create I do not want to use the spring security login page rather I want to use my own login page that time I might need to customize this uh, form login method with a customizer and I have to do something and we will see that things later but for now if you want to fix this deprecation thing you can stick to this approach okay guys that's it for this video and now let's just go ahead and hear some of the questions from the audience uh, well you might see some of the patch work in this video just like this uh, voiceover you're hearing i'm doing it post the video has been recorded because there was some issue happened in the live and the complete video was not recorded that's why i'm re-recording it 
Okay, guys, this much of things is making sense. What I have done over here, is it making sense, guys? Yes. Avilash, what if you comment line number seventy six? Yes. Oh, line number seventy six or seventy five? Like, if you comment any of it. Okay, line line number seventy six. This one. Yeah, what role it's playing? I forgot. I think. Yeah, this will just activate the login form. If you gonna comment out this, obviously this will be permitted by all. But the other two will be needing the authentication as we have written this dot authenticated. One second. So this one, if you're gonna go and write hi here, you should be able to access that. But the uh, endpoints for what you need authentication that will not prompt you the login page, right? That's why to activate the login page, I have done like this. Okay. But Abhilash, if you keep only one of it, like form login on, but yeah, HTTP form basic, login you don't... is fine. If you're gonna keep one of this, the form login will appear. But whenever you'll be logging in from, if let's say from here the on, you'll be trying. Okay, got it. Yeah, right. That time you need to provide the authentication. Uh, the HTTP Abhilash, uh, customizer dot uh, form login is their method. Customizer dot form login. Uh, yeah, written. Uh, customizer dot request matches for all, right? Like yes. that. Oh, okay. Like form login. It can be used only on top of HTTP security. No, it's not like you can only write uh, form login over this HTTP security object. It can obviously do like this, or you can just do something like uh, customizer um, dot with defaults. So you can obviously do that. Ap apart from that, I think you can do something like this. Uh, let me just do something like this. Authorize HTTP request. Okay, take the one which te which takes a customizer, take a customizer as a argument. Okay, this is to filter out all the requests and customize them the way you want right over here. And on top of this, I think you can also use a form login, something like that. Uh, let me just show you how can we do this. For example, this is my customizer and I can take this customizer right here, customizer dot any request dot authenticated and on top of this you can just do dot form login and also you can just write your form login like this also this is also a valid piece of code ignore the warning it is giving me right over here but you can write something right over here it can just concatenate and join it like this and you can just write you can take another customizer object like this um, let's say customizer and then just do dot with a defaults if you want to stick with the default configuration and in the future video we will learn if we will customize the form login you can just do login customizer this is going to be a customizer uh, you're going to be taking as a reference and then you can just do a various um, configuration over here inside this for an example you can take this login customizer that you have defined and over here it can set okay uh, what is going to be my login page let's say you do not want to use the spring security login page you want to create your own login page then define your login page over here right you can do various configuration we will see later in the course how we will be doing it uh, but yeah various thing you can do with the form login customizer later but right now as we haven't studied about it i'm gonna stick to the default you can either make it blank if you're going to make it blank then make sure that this method will be removed in the spring security 7 so you might have problem so better to define uh you know the default uh, default configuration over here if you're not defining anything uh specific for the form login with the with default method you can just do customizer with with defaults if you're not customizing your login form if you are planning to stick with the default don't leave it blank just uh give this guy and this chain this uh, form login along with this particular method okay so you're going to be seeing this kind of pattern a lot you can over here also you can do dot http basic and here only you can just do again customizer dot with defaults right like like this only you can keep on coding right so it is absolutely fine if you're going to remove this if you're using 6.0 version if you're going to remove this thing but later you may have problems so uh, this is going to be a safe option if you're going to be coding right on 2023 and beyond if you want to rest for at one page uh, then how to do uh, restrict for one? 
hello is only accessible for admin yeah then same thing ha hello is only accessible for admin then we will be learning about this uh, digna in the next class you can okay. just do dot hey role and just put admin over here now hello okay. will be only be accessible for admin let's say right now i have two user i have a i have a user called um akhil i have a user called anil right anil has only user role akhil has both the admin role and user role so akhil has the admin role so if akhil has the admin role akhil only can access the hello endpoint anil cannot access the hello endpoint because anil does not have the admin role let's just check that if i'll go to hello and do an enter it is asking for login but let's say anil is login anil and anil he will not be able to access the page even after he logs in he will not be able to access the page because he does not have any role for this but let's say anil logs out okay and akhil is trying to log in like this now akhil should be able to access the hello endpoint let's say if i'm going to write hello he'll be able to access it right so if you are writing this if you are writing like uh, this right here hello has role there is no need to write authenticated after it right but if you want to authentic if you don't want to specify any role if you are directly writing authenticated that means anyone who is authenticated who has provided the username and password and logging in he, they will be able to authenticate this particular endpoint or they they will be able to uh, log into like you know once they log in they will be able to see this particular endpoint digna okay. making sense yes yes yeah but we will be going into that pretty much in detail in the next session uh, any other questions guys Avalash, if you change the version to 6.0.04 Spring Security, I think that I didn't get. Yeah, Avalash, can you show the POM once? Just wanted to check the version. POM here, I have, I, I have just used the 6.0 version for everything. Okay, this method okay. is present from this method is present in 6.0 version also, right? But oh, this okay. is the recommended way. The other version is, this one is also one second. Don't get confused with the version. This one authorized HTTP request. Okay. This version is working, is not giving you the deprecated mark over here. But once you switch back to 6.1, this is this is deprecated and uh, it, it is marked for removal from 7.0 version. So don't use this. Got okay? it. Use like this. Okay. Uh, okay. Making they sense, guys. They introduced two, uh, two styles, okay, in 6.0. Yes. Right, Avalos? Uh, yeah. In 6.0, it's not like they have, this method is there, I think, from... Uh, Four point something since five point five. See, we, they have okay. they have created this method. They haven't forced us to use it, but eventually, okay. um, you know, okay. they are recommending this one, and the other one they are removing. This one is also a new method only, five point six version, which takes no argument right here. Uh, previously, if you see my old Spring Security course, we used to use this one, authorize request only, uh, not authorize HTTP request. And this is they have deprecated it and i think this will be removed from the 7.0 version so use this one to be secure things like this in your code okay so practice this okay. much i will cover more things about this in the next lesson did i confuse you guys did i confuse you tell me no i have confused uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vijay? Abhilash, no, no, if we don't put any yeah, yeah, Arsena. Okay, so basically, if, if we remove these two lines, right, 64 uh -huh. and 65, uh, uh -huh. it's going to authenticate everything, right? All the because it is we not, are not going to authenticate anything because you have not specified anything, right? Yes. Oh, yes, not... sorry, sorry. So basically, we are going to reach the endpoints, right? Exactly. You have to give either you have to give specific endpoint or you have to make like you know all the endpoints like customizer dot any request dot, yeah. dot authenticated. This is going to authenticate everything right now okay Everything. if you can be but if specific, i don't want any uh, the way hmm. that i have shown you with that you can be specific hmm. right yeah yeah Correct. next question yeah arjuna yeah that's it that's it